Hi and welcome to the CMC Markets webinar with myself, David Madden, a market analyst uh, at, at CMC Markets and today's date is Monday the 19th of June. The time is just gone uh, 12.15. Now before we actually kick off with the actual webinar itself, as always here at CMC we'll just be quickly running through the risk warning slides and I'll just go through them individually for yourself to have a read through. And now that we've gotten the actual risk warning out of the way, I'm after seeing here from a comment from one of the clients that the, uh, there's no sound here at present. Uh, any, uh, can you hear me now? Has there been any changes to that whatsoever? So just to clarify, before we kick off with the actual webinar itself, um, do we have any uh, complaints regarding the sound and the volume? Is everything all in, in order? If you could just please type in the box, that would be uh, that would be fantastic. And for those of you who are just joining us, uh, my name is David Madden. Uh, I'm a market analyst, uh, relatively new to the CMC team, and uh, glad to be on board. Uh, so if you could just excellent, we're seeing here audio is back, uh, all is good now, excellent. Um, yes, so similar to Michael's seminar, uh, Michael, Michael's webinar, uh, we'll, be we'll be discussing the main events uh, over the weekend and also more, more importantly looking ahead to uh, the trading week that lies in front of us. Uh, so we, what we've seen uh, today um, for the big kind of political news over the weekend uh, was the news out of France uh, that uh, Emmanuel Macron's party uh, the well, I can't do the uh, Manuel Macron's party uh, got a majority uh, in in the assembly. It wasn't as a as a large a majority as predicted, but nonetheless, political stability in France uh, certainly bodes well for the e e EU wide stock market, the French stock market itself, the CAC, and also the uh, the, the single currency. If you now just uh, quickly uh, have a quick look at what's going on with the actual French market. Uh, we can just see how well the uh, Macron effect has been uh, on the actual trade, trading session. So looking at on a very short term basis, we can see here uh, how we started off uh, on, on the morning. Uh, overnight, the, uh, the, the market jumped uh, overnight. As we can see here, we we're, we're kind of a few hours into the trading week and we are still um, well above, just, just narrowly above the kind of psychological uh, 5,300 level. Uh, the, the French market as a whole, just taking a, kind of a step back. Obviously, we have seen some choppy trading uh, in the um, in the in, in the global equity markets and uh, uh, European equity markets. Uh, what we can spot here is that we did manage to gap higher on the uh, on on the France on the France 40, the uh, the CAC. It's now sitting nicely on the 200-hour moving average, uh, which comes into play at 52.83. Uh, gaps higher obviously is going to be a bullish indicator. It's, it's, it's solid political news from France and Mr. Macron. His party has actually got a, a, a majority in the French Parliament. Uh, so uh, given that we have seen uh, some uncertainty in France and, and, and also the, the wider Eurozone, the pushing higher this, mor this morning on, on the market does seem to be again, a, a short term boost. Uh, if you take a bit of a wider term look at how the uh, the CAC has performed, much like a lot of the stocks in Europe and also around the world, didn't exactly have the best May. Um, the month of May has seen a bit of a shake up. Uh, we did have some uncertainty regarding the, the kind of Donald Trump in inspired sell off, but we are seem to be re regaining ground, uh, particularly uh, on, on today's trading session. As we can see here, that the uh, that the French market has had quite a, an extensive run. 
I, initially, um, the, the major jolt higher was when uh, Macron did quite well in the first round of the presidential elections. Some people had uh, questions over whether that was actually going to be replicated in the assembly elections, which, which we now know it has been has been done so today. And just taking a closer look here, the wider trend uh, on the CAC 40 has been clearly to the upside. Uh, the gap here, which was created back in, in April, uh, is still intact, even though we did test it uh, only um, only at the back end of last of, of last week. But as we can see here, the the, the CAC 40 is now hovering as is, is, is above the 50-day moving average, which not only bodes well, but that 50-day moving average uh, is now going to act as a level of support. So. Should we see um, that the French market remain above that level of 52.73, that is going to be continue to be a, uh, a bullish. Um, that is going to do the outlook for the French market is going to continue to be bullish. And then obviously upside targets are going to be the big psychological number of 5,400. And then beyond that, uh, the the uh, May high of 5,475. And then, and then should we get to that level, we're only a very short distance away from the 5,500 level. Uh, the, 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 the picture across Europe is actually quite quite similar as well. So if you take a look at uh, the German market, how they performing? They've generally been largely kind of in step, but also um, but also the political news, political stability news out of France is also going to bode well uh, for the German market too. Similarly, uh, the the Similarly, uh, the, the German market is, uh, is also pointing higher, uh, as it's been trading higher over the last number of months. Since the back end of 20, 2016, uh, it's, it's fair to say the German market has been actually more aggressive in, in its move to the upside, and the, the move to the downside hasn't been as severe. We're still comfortably above the 50-day moving average uh, for the Germany 30, the, the, the DAX. Uh, once again, we are testing uh, the the highs uh, of of last week, uh, approaching the um, thirteen thousand level on the DAX. Uh, the outlook does appear to be re remain quite solid. Uh, it is encouraging to see that the the selling level that we're, we're seeing on the momentum downside is actually been has been has been slowly tapering off. We've yet to see it swing around to the positive side, uh, but as we're seeing the mark, as we as we're seeing the selling momentum decrease. Uh, we are seeing prices push higher, so we could see a scenario whereby we could see the momentum flipped to the positive. Um, just taking a look at this on a shorter term, shorter term chart to get an idea of what kind of levels we could be looking at in the near term. We did see a jolt higher here this morning, uh, as uh, when the futures market opened. I uh, haven't quite taken out the, the high of last week just yet. But once again, uh, any sign of a kind of a pullback to going kind of towards the 12,800 level could see additional buyers. The kind of consolidation of the various different moving averages, the 50, the 100, and the 200-day moving average, would suggest that there is a small bit of uncertainty uh, in the, in the market. Uh, and to, to be it's a it'd be clear to fairly say. But the the wider trend clearly is to the upside. Uh, so I think for the, for the, at least on judging from the chart alone. The outlook does appear to be fairly positive on, on that front. We'll obviously now t turn our attention to uh, to the, what's going on in in London. Uh, we, we focus a lot on the on the eurozone so far, and now especially seeing as we've had a lot of political uncertainty on the, the United Kingdom uh, in the in the last number of uh, weeks. Uh, we still have um, there's no official deal or or, or or agreement struck between Theresa May's Conservative Party and the Democratic Unionist Party from Northern Ireland. Uh, as you can see here, the trend of the FTSE 100 is not too dissimilar to the trend we've seen in the Germany 30 and the France 40 as well. It does appear, it's been a fairly clear uh, upward move. Buying the dip has been a popular theme, uh, been, a, been a common strategy uh, we've seen for the FTSE and the DAX and the CAC the last number of months. And it would appear for the time being uh, that, 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 that that trend does appear to be uh, rem remaining in check. It is worth noting that when we did have some, some large sell-offs, the, the negative momentum was increasing. Now that we're seeing the momentum decreasing, we are, we are seeing actually equity market that the, the, the UK 100 push a bit higher. Once again, it would be nice to see that, to see that, um, that uh, negative momentum diminish and then possibly turn, turn positive. But it could be an early indicator of which way the, the, the momentum is pointing. 
So this level here to keep an eye out for on the FTSE 100, the 7400, this large jolt we're seeing here to the downside um, is the night of the actual general election. This would, this would have been the 10 o'clock move that we witnessed when the exit polls indicated that uh, the Tories were to be the largest party, but they would not have a majority. We tested it again and we held it and we, we, we traded through it, but we didn't actually, but we managed to get back above it again here uh, at the back end of last week, sorry, the middle of last week. The 7,400 level is a kind of a key level to, to watch out for on the UK 100. While we, we remain above that level, uh, it is it is uh, it is going to kind of point in the direction of a of a positive uh, positive momentum for the FTSE 100. We're also seeing a bit of consolidation in the, in the moving averages here, uh, which also kind of says to assign a, a bit of indifference. Um, what is kind of just what well, can't really be ignored is we are seeing ever, ever so slightly. Uh, lower highs and lower lows in the FTSE 100. Uh, it's 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 quite it's, it's still holding up nicely because it's above the 7,400 mark, but it would be nice to see the FTSE get back above the 7,550 region. Then once we can take off that level, then we, we can be more confident that we're going to head up back towards the 7,600. Obviously, on the on the um on the very political front. Uh, the, the lack of a Tory, Tory, Tory majority in Downing Street is obviously worried about worried, worried the financial markets. On Wednesday, we're going to have the have the Queen's speech, and apparently, uh, with or without an agreement from the Democratic Unionist Party, that's going to, Theresa May is, is going to be go, going ahead with that in in in, uh, in in either way. It's obviously going to be a, a big week for for the uh, political front. Uh, today is the day one of the Brexit negotiations. Uh, David Davis, uh, Brexit Secretary for the UK, is over in Brussels and is hoping to get a, a deal, a historic deal, none, none, that it, none of which we have, we, have, uh, we have seen before. Uh, this, is obviously, this is obviously going to be something which is going to be a long and drawn out process. Uh, there's obviously going to be major questions uh, to be asked uh, on, on the initial stages of that, the Brexit talks. Uh, covering what's going to happen regarding uh, EU citizens residing in the United Kingdom, what and, and obviously British citizens living in the remainder of the EU, what's going to happen regarding the so-called divorce bill, what kind of numbers are, are going to be thrown out regarding that, and also the border uh, on on the island of Ireland is obviously going to be brought up as well between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. On on that point, uh, the Democratic Unionist Party, who it could be, are likely to be having some sort of uh, an agreement or pact. With the, with the with the Tory party, they're very much in favour of having an open border, a continuation of the open border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. So any changes on the political landscape uh, in in the next number of days uh, is obviously going to be a is going is going to be closely watched. Anything in, in any announcements in relation to Brexit or any announcements in relation to what's going what, what, what's um, what, what's going to come out of the Queen's speech on Wednesday. Now on top of that, uh, not only do we have a um, we have we have the Brexit talks and the Queen's speech coming up. But we also have a number of um of big economic co uh, corporate story sorry, sorry economic indicators coming out of the UK. Uh, and and uh, which I'll quickly I'll, I will run through the big economic indicators of the week, and then afterwards I will then look at uh the corporate stories of the week, and then we'll, and then I'll take some questions. And if there's any markets or anything you want me to comment on, we can just have have a look at that uh, as we go along. Uh, so we, we've covered the big uh, economic uh, news um, events so far. Later on in the United States, William Dudley of the Federal of the Federal Reserve uh, is speaking at uh, at one o'clock. Obviously, last week's um, bit of a bit of a uh, surprise from the Federal Reserve how they could, um, lowered their inflation forecast for the United States uh, for, for the year. That, in my view, is a way of Janet Yellen saying that I know inflation is low. So what? We're still pushing ahead with our tightening policy. The move itself to, to increase interest rates by 0.2 percent has, has been what was was widely priced in the markets for a number of weeks. Uh, but the fact that she turned around and said we're also going to be looking at um, winding down the, the enormous size of the, the the number of assets they have on their balance sheet, government bonds, mortgage-backed securities, and so on and so forth, uh, really just give an indication that despite the fact that some of the economic indicators out of the US hasn't been overly impressive recently. Miss Yellen is still going to push ahead and actually look to do uh, continue tightening the actual policy, which if anything 
really just uh, lets, lets, uh, lets the market know that that is what, 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 the, what she's planning on doing. Obviously, things could change. Like I said, we saw some poor housing figures out of the United States uh, on, on Friday, just gone at, at lunchtime. It isn't going to be as kind of data driven as the as, as, as the moment, but I was I would still recommend have a listening to um, Miss Miss Yellen if she's saying that the United States is going to be heading in a direction of tightening monetary policy. That is something that is need to be listened out for. So in just under half an hour's time, we're going to have uh, William Dudley of the Federal Reserve um, speaking uh, at one o'clock London time. Uh, overnight, uh, we from the also we have another update. Uh, from from the uh, of the Fed Reserve member uh, Charles Evans is speaking o- overnight uh, just gone midnight uh, and, and Mr and Mr Evans is a member of the is a, is a member of the um uh, is a member of, of the, the Fed Reserve uh, uh, FO, FOM, FOMC and uh, he's going to be speaking at just gone midnight tonight uh, we also have the monetary policy minutes from the uh, the Australian meeting. Um, the, the, the Reserve Bank of Australia. Well, also, also the big one to watch out for from the kind of European point of view is going to be Mark Carney's comments uh, tomorrow uh, regarding uh, speaking of a week of uh, surprises in central bank updates. Uh, it, it was a bit of a shock to us all when um, three of the three uh, members of the Bank of England voted to actually hike rates. Now, to be fair, Kirsten Forbes uh, has been known to, uh, was. Uh, has voted to hike rates in the past, and it was hardly a surprise that Kirsten Forbes wanted to hike rates again. Uh, but when we had two more members uh, joining Miss Miss Forbes in that, it did really kind of she did really actually cast traders off guards, and it gave a nice shot in the arm to uh, to Sterling. That's going to be the, the probably the biggest economic indicator to watch out for uh, from from like a London from a UK perspective on Tuesday. And we'll just have a quick look at the uh, at, at cable now and see and see what it's been doing uh, over the morning. So as we can see, the uh, the morning session, uh, the pound has has pushed a higher versus the US dollar. It's given back a very small amount of its gains, but overall, considering that there's a political uncertainty in the UK, Brexit talks are beginning today. I would say I would say that, that the pound has done fairly well. Uh, against the US dollar in, in the uh, since Sunday's uh, Sunday's trading got underway, as we can see here, we are seeing uh, that the that the pound versus the US dollar is above the 200-hour moving average, uh, which comes into play at 127.80. Uh, so and and the momentum is to the upside in the uh, in the currency pair, which also bodes well for it. What we're also seeing here as well, we're seeing a kind of a quite a sharp upturn in the 50-hour moving average. So we could get us, we could be looking at a scenario whereby the 50-hour moving average would cross above the 200-hour moving average, and that would, and that, should we see that, that would be a bullish indicator. Uh, in terms of kind of levels to watch out for, if we just kind of, if we just take a look at the uh, at the chart uh, on a, on a wider basis, uh, we can get a feel for what areas that we should be looking out for. I'll just scroll this out a bit further. So over the last number of months, we can see that since basically throughout 2017, uh, that the pound has broadly speaking been moving higher versus the, the US dollar. The next big level to watch out to for on the pound versus the dollar uh, on, on the upside is going to be 128.40. Uh, this level here, we've seen quite a bit of uh, support, and uh, that's going to be an area of now resistance. Now that the market is uh, is heading up to, towards that, uh, so that is a level to keep out for, keep an eye out for on on pound versus the US dollar. As we can see here, that the negative momentum, uh, which kind of has dog stirred in the last number of months, is actually seen, seen starting to wane. So we are, it, it, it's this is exactly what we we'll want to be seeing when, when momentum, when the negative momentum is dwindling. We do want to see that the markets uh, being ref- having reflected that in the price as well, so we can be more confident that the move we're seeing at the price is reflected in the underlying momentum, which it is. So should we see the pound continue to move higher versus the US dollar, we could also see the momentum uh, taper off as well. So um, we, we, it, we have lost some ground, uh, but we, we, we've managed to held, held, held above the 100-day moving average at 126.12. So 
that would be a note to watch out for should we see a downside move in the pound but while we hold above the 100 on a day moving average which it tried tried which it didn't quite get to but it, it certainly gave an attempt for uh in in, uh, in last during last week while we hold above that i think we, we are going to have a positive outlook uh, on the pound versus the US dollar and like i said the next immediate level to watch out for is 128.40 should we take out that the next level to watch out for then would, would be the big psychological 130 level we'll also just quickly turn our attention now to the uh, the euro sterling seeing as uh, we're, we're keeping an eye on the uh, what's going on with the british pound So this here is the chart here of the of the, uh, of the euro versus the um, the sorry the euro versus the pound over the last number of over the last number of weeks. As you can see, the euro has been considerably gaining ground over the, on the, the single the single currency has been gaining ground over the pound in the last number of weeks. Uh, broadly speaking, we have seen some fairly decent economic indicators out of the eurozone. There has been talk that the ECB are going to have to go down the route of some of some monetary tightening. Uh, and conversely, we've seen some not so overly impressive economic indicators out of the uh, out of uh, the United Kingdom uh, in the in that time in that in the time period. So we are seeing a, an upward move in the euro versus the, the pound. Uh, but bearing in mind that this here is the move that we witnessed last week when the, when the uh, it was revealed that three of the three it was three versus five who voted to uh, to raise rates. Uh, so that that shock move here sent the currency pair lower. But it did still manage to hang on to the support level at 87.20, a level which has has been I've seen some consolidation in the last number of weeks. The level to kind of to keep an eye out for on the, on the on the currency pair at this moment, seeing as it's fairly clearly moving in an upward trend. While we look at it on this time frame, is obviously going to be 88. Should we move on past 88? We're then going to be looking at the high, uh, heading towards 88.40, and then in, in the direction of 88.60. So the kind of buying the dip has been the kind of popular strategy for the euro versus the, the pound over the last number of weeks. And that, that is, uh, judging by the outcome, we're seeing the, the flow of the trend that is appears to what is going to be, to be a continuation. If we just now turn our attention to the big economic indicators that are coming out uh, on, 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 uh, on Wednesday, because the seeing as that we've covered Tuesday's lot, uh, what... What are the, the big economic indicators to watch out for on Wednesday? Once again, we have a member of the Bank of England speaking, Andy H uh, Hollanday is speaking at, uh, at 12 o'clock on Wednesday. On Wednesday, sorry, I, 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 I forgot the uh, we skipped over the public sector net borrowing numbers from the UK. They're out at half nine. Uh, Mr. Holiday is, is giving his update at uh, at, at 12 o'clock uh, at at high noon. Uh, other things to watch out for during that, that trading session are also going to be the U.S. existing home sales numbers. Uh, we're, we're expecting a reading of 5.54 million, a slight drop down from 5.57 million, which we saw last, uh, which, we, which we saw the, the month previous. Bearing in mind that we had uh, quite some, we had quite poor housing data from the United States only on the Friday just gone, so that will, will be something to keep an eye out for. As we have every single Wednesday at half past three, we have the old inventory figures coming out. Uh, we, uh, we've yet to have a, a, a forecast on that, but bearing in mind, last week we did see a decline of 1.7 million barrels of, of oil. Uh, the the oil market itself has been very much in a, in a downtrend uh, for the last number for the last number of weeks since the back end of May. Uh, May 25th is when we had that OPEC meeting in Vienna, and the uh, the, on the oil exporting countries OPEC, the uh, the organisation which um, which uh, is by far and large uh, the largest as a conglomerate major supplier of the world's oil, they announced uh, that they're sorry they announced that they're going to actually uh, extend their production cost until March 2018, and then after that was actually confirmed because it was previously leaked. Uh, we did see a major sell-off uh, in, in the price of oil, and to be fair, it hasn't really recovered since. If we just take a look at this chart here, this is the move here on the 25th of May last year. It's been very much clearly in, in a downward trend. If anything, it's actually shown you kind of textbook examples of a down of a downward trend. We're creating lower lows and we're seeing lower highs. And in some instances here, 
whenever we, we do see a pullback and actually the pullback actually ties in nicely with the previous support level uh, so we could see easily see a continuation of the trend that we've actually been encompassing uh, for the, for the uh, for, for, for oil for the last number of weeks looking at it even on a wider scale we can see that since March it, it's it's even clearer the, uh, the the lower lows and the lower highs that we're seeing uh, for for oil for, we're currently looking at a Brent crude I'll flip over to at the WTI in a second but nonetheless the actual the actual uh, charts for the two look very very similar as we can see here last week the 50 day moving average crossed below the 200 day moving average that is a bearish indicator so not only are we seeing a, a, a series of lower prices but even it's, it's not been reflected in the moving average so the next level to watch out for with the downside uh, on, on Brent oil is going to be $46.35 uh, then below that the big level to watch out for will be the will be the low that we saw in November of $43.13 now I'll just take a look at it on a, on a, on a near term chart to get any ideas for it. if you see any rallies uh, in the price of oil what levels could we could we expect to uh, to rally back towards so we're seeing a lot of consolidation and we're seeing a lot of um, price action and the old support here in the region and the old support here in the region of 46 of, uh, of 48 80 that is uh, that obviously uh, acted as resistance here and then it pushed the market lower so we could be looking we could be running into resistance in the near term here the 200 hour moving average is uh, is at 47.87 that coincides here with some support from the back end of last week so we're approaching that level now and obviously um, we have seen a fairly clear pattern of the market selling off creating a new low rallying back when you see a bit of short covering or a bit of uh, bargain hunting pushing the price back up again and then only actually to actually turn over on itself again so we could see if we do see any more more of a rally in the price of Brent crude uh, in the up to around 48 80 or 49 dollars a barrel that could be an area which we could see some resistance coming into play before we, we have the next move lower I'll just flip over now to the WTI uh, WTI chart it's in terms of actual the, the price pattern it has been very similar for the, the two markets uh, for the last number of weeks if you take a look at the big picture it's almost it's very similar position from the end of from, from March we started creating a, a lower low lower high and yet again all the way up and down textbook examples of, uh, of what, what a lower what a declining trend looks like uh, for the time for the time being we're currently trading in around just just shy of $45 a barrel uh, but the level to watch out for is going to be the May low of 43.56 and should we drop below that level the, le the level to watch out for under, under that is going to be the November low of 42.15 now if we just take a look at it on an hourly chart uh, we'll just give you an idea of how much how, how uh, well on, on WTI the sell-offs have actually been more severe than they have actually on, on Brent has been much more volatile the last number of weeks this here is a uh, the figure dating back to um, to last Wednesday's oil, oil inventories and then and, and it would appear that is the Wednesday before that so we have seen some big sell-offs on the days of uh, and, and we have seen some big sell-offs and big volatility on the days of the old figures so this figures uh, this number this week's numbers should, should be closely kept an eye on once again the name of the game for uh, for the uh, for WTI for the last few weeks in terms of popular trading strategies has been to kind of sell into rallies so the 200, 200 hour moving average comes into play at $45.60 that area also coincides with what has been a bit of a support region for when the market has sold off after the major sell-off uh, um, in early June couldn't quite get above it so should we see a rallies up in the direction of around uh, $45.60 up to $46 that's when we could be looking at a scenario of an of a of running into resistance and actually pushing lower again uh, turning our attention back to the economic calendar uh, what else to watch out for during the week? I'm conscious of the time here that we've been uh, I've been talking for, for for half an hour as it is already. Uh, turning our attention over to what's, what what we, we can look at uh, on on Thursday, we have UK CPI industry uh, in, uh, CP, sorry CBI 
um, industrial order expectations, respecting a reading of seven versus the previous reading of, of, of nine. That's obviously going to have an impact on, on sterling. For anyone who's trading the pound versus the US dollar, any, 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 any sterling crosses, need to keep an eye on that. Uh, obviously, we, as every single Thursday, we have US jobless claims. Uh, we're expecting actually a rise in jobless claims from 237,000 to 241,000. So a slight ticking higher in the jobless claims numbers. Also, what's going to be in play on a currency pair that I that I've found interesting in the last number of months is the um, is the is the U.S. dollar versus the Canadian dollar and the core retail sales and retail sales out of Canada at half one on Thursday. Is obviously it's going to be something. It's going to be obviously going to play a big factor into that. Uh, we also got some H HPI HPI numbers out of the United States coming out there. Uh, this is going to be a combination uh, of basically of, uh, of looking at um, uh, home home price numbers out of the United States at, uh, at two o'clock on the on the Thursday coming up. Uh, Seven p.m. on Thursday night we have Chris and Forbes uh, of the Bank of England speaking. Uh, like like I said, Miss Forbes have voted has been voting for the uh, interest rate hikes from the for, from the Bank of England uh, at the last number of meetings. Miss um, Forbes is a due to due to finish up her time at the Bank of England this month. So maybe the the financial markets won't be kind of ha having uh, pay <coughs> putting as much uh, stock in, in her opinion as as we as they once did. Also to keep an eye out for, uh, for what's going on during the week is the manufacturing numbers out of Germany and uh, and and and, uh, and France. Yeah, the first thing on Friday morning. Uh, these are these are combination of both manufacturing and service numbers from Germany and France. Then later on in the, in the morning. We have the actual eurozone wide numbers. What we've often been seeing the last number of weeks has been a slight divergence uh, between the northern European economies and the southern European economies. And for a, for a bit of a change, it's actually been some of the southern European economies having slightly slightly better economic indicators than that of the, of the more nor northern and traditionally more powerful and rich eurozone countries. Um, I would keep an eye on what what was what is going on in Germany because. Let's face it. Germany has a disproportionately large say in what's going on in the in the eurozone, and uh, I would be kind of taking the ECB cues uh, from what is going on more so in the German economy than than the, than the French economy. Uh, later on uh, on Thursday uh, Thursday sorry Friday lunchtime we have the Canadian CPI numbers uh, coming out, and that is probably it uh, in terms of what's coming out of of Canada for the week, and then later on towards the back end of the Friday trading session, uh, we're going to have service service numbers out from the US. And we're also going to have new home sales out from the US. And like I said, keep in mind, keep 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 in mind that we did see some disappointing numbers from the United States last week in terms of actual housing housing figures. Um, I'll have a quick look at the uh, Canadian dollar because we got some quite a few bits and pieces of Canadian and also some um, United American data coming up this week. Also, the Canadian dollar, as you're just talking about oil, is your classic currency. Is your classic currency commodity. Uh, the, as the price of oil gets lower and lower, we could see additional pressure being put on to the Canadian dollar. So, if take a look here at the chart. Uh, this here is the this here is the, the uh, U.S. dollar versus the Canadian dollar, and this is how it's been faring uh, over the last number of months. Quite a lot of volatility that we've seen. Uh, the May high was quickly uh, quickly sold off because we are seeing also hearing some more hawkish commentary out of uh, the bank of the Reserve Bank of, of, of Central Bank in Canada, Canada. So we are seeing a pushing lower in the, uh, the the dollar versus the Canadian dollar. As we can see here, uh, last week the the the, 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 the dollar versus the US Canadian dollar uh, pushed below and has, and has remained below the 200-day moving average. This is the first time we've seen that in a while. This is obviously a kind of, kind of a, quite a major indicator of which way that the market is heading. Uh, should we continue to push on further south in that currency pair, uh, the next level to watch out for to the downside is going to be heading towards 131, and then below that again, uh, the, the big psychological 130 it's, itself. Uh, if we just take a look at the currency pair um, on a kind of more short-term basis, once again, it's just showing kind of a classic example. Uh, since May, over the last five or six weeks, just steadily pushing lower, and any rallies have been sold into. 
Uh, if we do see another rally, it may provide an opportunity to to, uh, to to get short, and the rallies could be we could see a rally back up to uh to 130 level and the 134 level. These would be the regions. If you were looking to um if you are if you are already short uh the Canadian dollar, these are the regions you should be keeping an eye out for where where we could move to. Uh, we've already traded below 132 as it is, so immediately heading that back towards 13160 is obviously going to be the initial downside target, and then pushing towards 131 and then 130 itself. Uh, we've discussed a lot of the economic uh, data coming out during the week. We also have a we also have a number of um, we also have a number of companies reporting during the week as well. So on our website here under the news analysis, if, if you can find the, uh, the the weekly uh, earnings update uh, which which, uh, which Mike uh, posted last week to be honest today is a fairly quiet day and it's, if I'm really honest it's a, it's a relatively quiet week uh, but I'll quickly get a run through some of the highlights uh, tomorrow we have both FedEx and Adobe systems out of the United States uh, other highlights uh, for the rest of the week um, we also have Berkeley Group which is a home builder based in the UK Oracle, uh, a tech company based in the United States, are posting their figures on Wednesday, and on Thursday we got Barnes and Noble from the United States, probably 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 the biggest one uh, to to be worth mentioning on on Thursday from the US. I will have a quick look at the charts of what, what's going on in these stocks here. So I'll bring up now uh, Adobe Systems. Just scrolling down here, I was looking at it earlier on, so I definitely do have it on my watch list. It's some somewhere along the lines. Adobe Systems, here it is. So on Tuesday, what we can uh, we're expecting the uh, second qu the second quarter figures out of Adobe, and if you take a look at the uh, the really long term chart, if you look at it on a multi basis, we can see that we're actually just absolutely skyrocket. Uh, the share price has just absolutely skyrocketed. Uh, like many stocks in that sector, it has the the, the upward move uh, has been quite quite frankly parabolic, uh, and it is a bit worrying that we're seeing this bullish, sorry bearish rather bearish uh, engulfing here. So we did see a big uh, a big downside candle here, which is something that should be, to be certainly to be to be mindful about. As we can see, um, the upward momentum is declining as well. So we can see that it, 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 it both. Are pointing in the same in the same direction to the downside. Uh, the share price traded below the 50-day moving average uh, last week, but it still managed to get back above it, and we're now just about hovering on the 50-day moving average. While we hold above that level, which is in the $136.14, while we hold above the 50-day moving average, the outlook will, will continue to, to remain positive. But seeing as that seeing as that uh, that large red candle we saw on the on the weekly chart and this is going to be it here on, on the daily chart is a kind of classic bearish engulfing it is something to be to be worried about um if we do see a pullback in the stock we could be looking at pulling back towards 130 dollars a share or 123 dollars and 55 cents that being said the wider big term picture is so much so to, to the outside we have to yet to yet to see how this plays out. Whether is this just going to be a fairly sizable correction, or whether this is actually the beginning of a, a major actual reversal or not, has yet to be seen. Should we trade below well below one thirty a one a one twenty three fifty five? That's something actually we uh, there are levels to keep an eye out for. One of the big companies to talk about during the week from from the uh, from the United Kingdom is the home builder Berkeley Group. Uh, Berkeley Group uh, are the kind of higher end of uh, of home builders in the UK. Um, their share price took a bit of a knock. It's it's, it's, it's fair to say uh, after the uh, the general election results came out, and that Theresa May had lost her conservative majority. But if you take a look at the share price in the in the last number of, in the last number of months in the last number of weeks and months, it has been very much the upside. Hasn't gotten there to, in, in there to the 2016 highs so far. But it, it it is pushing higher, so the current the share price is, is currently kind of trapped in between the 50-day moving average and the 100-day moving average. We managed to hang on to the 100-day moving average as as acting as support at just over 31 pounds 31 pounds per share. If we can hang on to that level, 
the Aldic is still going to remain is going to remain bullish, and we'll be looking for the upside targets of uh, of uh, of 34 pounds a share. Should we drop back below the 100 day moving average? Uh, the next level to watch out for below that is going to be the psychological 30 pounds per share. It's a big number, psychological level. And on top of that, it was also where a gap was created after a jolt higher back in March. Um, in terms of any kind of questions or comments you, you, you have, I've covered the kind of economic and the corporate highlights of the week. So if you did, if anything that I haven't covered and you want, and you want me to, uh, to kind of pass comment on, just if you just put it in the chat box and uh, I would happily do so. Oh, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Great insight. Thank you. All uh, compliments are always uh, are always welcome to you. Uh, pound versus the uh, the British pound versus the New Zealand dollar. Uh, just give me one second now, please. I just scroll down now. Well, the, well, if you take a look at the big picture here on the pound versus the New Zealand dollar, since the back end of 2015, uh, coming up in two years, coming up in two years now, and this year, um, the week which began the, the 23rd of August 2015, that was actually the day we had uh, Black Monday, the major, major sell-off in the Chinese equity, mar Chinese mar equity markets based on what happened in China overnight. Since then, uh, we've had effectively been, been in a fairly clear downward trend for the pound versus the New Zealand dollar. Uh, it's been very much um, a, a trendy market to the south side. And if you just take a look at here on, on a wider term basis, we have managed to kind of pull off, pull off the absolute lows. It has managed to take out, has managed to make up, make up for some of the lost ground. But the fact that it's, once again, this, this, this point here uh, at the 190 region, it couldn't be capped. Could suggest that we could be seeing another move lower. We could be heading back towards the, uh, the, the 170 level. Now, looking at it on a four-hour basis here, this is a kind of a classic textbook example of a, a, a market that is trending to the south side. Uh, we're creating lower lows, lower highs, and as we go along, in some instances here, after the market prints a new low, when it pushes back up, it often runs into the, the old support, the new resistance, which is actually ideal if you're looking for kind of a, a classic t short uh, shorting strategy. We didn't um, the, the last couple of uh, the last couple of sessions, uh, the market has been to an extent kind of in a way trend trading sideways here. We haven't actually created any new lows, but at the same time, the market has yet to kind of take out any further uh, take out any of the old highs to suggest that we're actually going to be moving. To the north anytime soon. I would say the outlook for this for this currency pair is very much to, to this to the downside. Um, in terms of the typical strategy, would be wait for a market to get a push higher and then look to actually sell in, into strength. If we push push take off this level here, uh, which comes into play at 177.66, the next between 177.66 and this level here, the 179 region. This could be an area should be pushed higher, but up could be an opportunity. We could see some resistance because we have a fairly decent form here of the market moving lower, pulling back some of the some of the losses, then running into resistance and then creating a, a new low. So judging what we've seen here um, on this chart for going on two years, and particularly this four-hour chart here maps it out fairly clearly. Uh, I think moves to the downside, uh, probably more moves to the downside is what we could see from the pound versus the New Zealand dollar. Uh, now that we've covered Stern, you're very welcome. 
Um, now that we've covered Sterling Kiwi, uh, are there any other questions or comments you want you'd like to make, um, or any kind of markets you would like me to have a look at? Um, I, I, I apologies, I did manage to run over time uh, by about 15 minutes, uh, so I, I am I am sorry. Gold was mentioned, um, and gold is certain, certainly an interesting one given what was uh, what has happened uh, with the actual um, the Federal Reserve in the last number of week in the last uh, week or so. So gold has sold off here. Um, the big kind of picture of gold is that it did manage to break above um, the there is the, the the kind of dot, the the trend resistance trend line resistance coming into play here, but that didn't last very long now, did it? Uh, at the moment, gold is looking a bit kind of a bit mixed-ish, to be perfectly honest. Um, the big picture was saying that we're, we're heading south, but the move since late, you know, since late 2016 has been kind of pushing more and more to, to the upside. Whether that is going to be a, a whether the move from, from here to here is actually just a kind of correction of the wider the wider sell-off that we've wit witnessed since um that since the summer of 2016 or whether this is actually just going to be uh gonna, gonna take out this this trend line resistance and actually then go on and target the highs of 2016 has yet to be really played out i would if you're looking at it from this point of view you know the last say six months it's been fairly clear that gold has been has been pushing higher but it still couldn't get get above that level here and even when it did uh, temporarily go through the uh, trend line resistance it only ever so slightly took out the high here of the uh, of, of april the april high here it got it got us to a high of uh, $95.58 12.95.58 and here it got to 12.96.17 so ever so slightly took it out before it returned it returned again uh, i'll take a look at it on a four hour chart um what I think regarding the, the the price of gold is that it's obviously going to be very sensitive of what goes on in in the um very sensitive what goes on with the Federal Reserve. Uh, like I said, the economic indicators in the United States haven't been overly impressive, but the Federal Reserve stated they are going to push ahead with, with the planning of pushing ahead with the tightening. Now that obviously may change, but at the same time, I, I don't think you can actually just completely outright ignore what what what, what uh, Janet Yellen said last week. But the trend in the, for the last say six or seven months has been clearly to the, to the upside. So had had you been buying as the market was was, was had some decent retracement, you would have done quite well. If we do see uh, a move on gold, I would like to see it kind of move out of this. Uh, I would like to see it move out of this uh, area. This this um the two kind of trend lines that has been kind of trapped in, in between. Uh, should we see any kind of fur further moves lower in gold? We could see buying come into play in around the kind of 200 day moving average 1240 or the or where the um, trend line support comes into play at around 1225 so yeah 1225 so we could see buying should be pulled back in here to the upside uh you, to the upside you then be looking at the targets of in the direction of 1300 dollars a share uh if you take a look at it on a, a shorter term basis also seeing as we're back in below uh the trend line trend line resistance which has come into play since since the back end of last year we could also drive us back down towards this area the the, the lower support line at, at 12 24. once again if we do move below back below 12 24 the next level to watch out for will, will, will be the, the may low of 12 15 and then we're talking heading that down towards 1200. um to be honest with you from the charting point of view, I, I think that the gold is is, is is pointing towards the upside. But at the same time, I'm also a bit concerned about what Janet Yellen said about how she's pressing ahead with tightening. Uh, it seems that Miss Yellen is kind of fairly uh, is fairly hawkish regardless of the economic data. And if the Fed keep talking about tightening, the price of gold is probably going to continue to be under pressure. Uh, is there any other markets you would like me to have a look at? Or any kind of comments I can be I can uh, pass on anything. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Right, seeing as um, seeing as it's now it's five past one. 
and we've had no further comments regarding actually ad uh, additional uh, markets to talk about i will just uh, wrap up the, uh, the webinar now um, thank you very much for joining myself my name is david madden market analyst at the cmc markets uh, i hope you enjoyed the week the uh, uh, the the webinar uh, please tune in next week next monday uh, and today was today's webinar for monday the 19th uh, thank you very much Pause it.